Okay, sorry for the background noise here, but hopefully we'll make this section sort. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm working on the expansion battery box for the uh, the expanded uh, solar generator, the one that's being built on this trailer here. Now this is just basically a battery box. There's not going to be much else in here, except that when I go to buy these boxes, I get such a good deal on these toolboxes compared to battery boxes um, that will hold as many batteries in that price range. I, I'm better off buying these Stanley toolboxes here over at Home Depot than getting the big battery boxes at the battery store. And they have wheels, so it's semi-portable. Uh, and I can put these tool trays in the top. Uh, you get one with each box. and uh, uh, But the other box is so full of stuff that I'm, I'm not going to have a tool tray in that one. But let's talk more importantly about the cable that goes on these things. Now, when I'm just making a short cable run from battery to battery, I can buy commercially made battery cables. And what I want to do is color code this, red being positive, black being negative, on 12 volt systems. And when I buy this type of deep cycle marine battery, what, what I really like is the ones that have both types of pole connectors on there. And so when I start a run, what I'll do here is I'm going to start on the big post, go to the small post, start on the big post, go to the small post, and then it daisy chains around in a semicircle here. Now, the reason we're not going to cross everything on everything is, um, one, I, I, I'm not quite sure how many batteries you're going to have on here, but I need to force that power to go through the whole battery bank. So when I hook up to this, I want the positive and negative to be electrically on far ends. Now, they don't necessarily need to be physically in opposite corners because what I'm doing is I'm setting my jumpers to go around in a circle. So this battery will not be hooked up to the battery that's connected right here. It only hooks up to this one. This one will hook up to one that goes sideways here, then one here, then one here. So I'll, I have a total of five batteries in here. If I need to swap one out, I can, but I'm probably not going to be doing that for quite a while. Now, on these, I can use these four gauge battery cables and we're going to be just fine. We can move a lot of amperage over that short distance. And it turns us into one giant 12 volt system, right? Now, when I'm trying to do a little more distance, and I'm running it, and I'm daisy chaining it to another box that's just as big, there's a potential for the need for a lot more amperage running back and forth. So, I, I go with a much thicker cable, and this is a, a, a 2 watt cable, U.S. made, very narrow strand, flexible stuff. Um, we have the uh, shrink wrap ends put on this, and then these will go on the posts here. Now, what I've done is I had this made with the Anderson Power Pole connected, the high amperage version, and every battle box, barrel, every battery box is going to get at least one of them. I may end up putting two if I'm going to be daisy chaining additional battery boxes, and that means you know the investment in these. Which, by the time we're all said and done, we're over 50 bucks a cable. Interestingly, they're all U.S. made, and so the next segment you're going to show this being made at a uh, battery place in Portland, Oregon, which to my knowledge is the only place you can readily get them where our color code goes red and black for you know positive, negative on 12 volt systems with a good weatherproof, tight, heavy duty connector. And you'll be seeing in the next segment how that is professionally made. All right, the United Battery, Portland, Oregon. Uh, got one of the managers here working with me on this. But this is the cable that we're using for the, uh, the connection between the battery boxes. So I'm using a heavier duty cable than what's just going battery to battery because we've got to be able to run more amperage. Now what he's going to do here is uh, we're going to use the heavier gauge version of the Anderson Power Pole Connector. And the way these things come is basically a larger version of what I've had in the other videos. Uh, these and of course it's made to handle a lot of amperage but if you look inside of there you're gonna see this pre solder stuff in there basically so it gets heated up with a torch 
Yeah, he's going to be stripping the ends. We heat up the torch. That's done with heat. I'll show that in the next little segment. And, you know, because obviously it's being made in the USA right now, we're, uh, you know, we got pretty good quality. It's a good quality cable they're using here. It's uh, a multi-strand. The reason we're going to use something with really skinny strands like this is because it can handle a long life of being flexed. Okay, so the thicker the strands, the less you really want to be flexing it. And that's why, like, uh, power, uh, cords that you would install in a house, you know, they're solid copper cable, but you shouldn't be making extension cords out of those because it can weaken and break. So the type of cable you're going to find at a battery shop is going to be a little different from Home Depot because they're going for a thinner strand because it can handle flex and vibration and, and things like that in vehicles a lot better. Uh, we're heating it up. It's, it's got the solder already in there. And we'll, uh, we'll see what happens because once it goes molten, the piece will just kind of slide right down in. And, and then it's, it's more or less permanent. We don't crimp this at all, right? It's no, just, no, just, yeah, the solder is all, the solder is the whole thing. So it'll take a little while to heat up. It was uh, room temperature. There we go. It sank in as I just as I turn the camera off and back on again. So we hold it. We let it harden again, and then uh, do the other one. So this is bubbling. It's getting ready to go. Um, I'm gonna go out. It sinks in all at once when it goes. Go slow so the solder doesn't all pour out. Yeah. Well, obviously, it's going to give us a pretty solid connection in there. So, yeah, for sure. Mm. And then, once those kind of cool off a little bit, they just kind of snap, snap into this thing. And what it is is the right side and the left side, but it's a, it's basically a positive negative. So when the other one gets snapped into this, you snap it in upside down. You want a 5 16 size or a 3 8 size? Uh, let's go for uh, what's that? 5 16. Yeah, because if I need to make that any bigger, I'll drill it out. Frame it out, yeah. So. yeah. Okay, cool. The other reason I picked this type of cable is that the two pieces come together, so I don't have to wrap them to get them connected. So, the other thing, way that works. And these ends will, cramp, uh, will be crimped, right? Uh, yeah. This is going to be a hammer crimp, yeah, it'll be yeah. crimped. Yeah, and that's with this thing. So this is the hammer crimper. Here's and then shrink. we'll put a little heat shrink stuff on there. That's it, yeah, push and click, that's it. Push and All click, right. yeah, we, we got, got it. it. And there we go, that's going to be the cable connecting between the two boxes. All right, All right. good to go.